Welcome to the All Around Joe Podcast, where we optimize your human performance from my personal experience as an athlete, coach, and all-around self-improvement junkie. On this edition of the All Around Joe Podcast, I am chatting with Alex Cunningham of Perfect Keto. Now, I've been testing the Perfect Keto products for the last month, and if you've been listening to the show at all, you know that I've been playing around with exogenous ketones for maybe about a year now, so on and off. And I was highly recommended to the Perfect Keto brand and have noticed some really cool results with taking the product. So I wanted to get Alex on the show here to ask him some of these questions about, you know, what is the Perfect Keto company? How can it help people in endurance and CrossFit? And then also the brain stuff, you know? So there's a cool cool thing that happens when you take ketones as far as focusing and your brain working better, which is very interesting to me and should be to you as well. So enjoy this podcast. And if you would like to pick up some perfect ketos for yourself, you can use the code all around Joe, or you can go to perfectketocom slash all around Joe and get yourself a discount. I like taking the perfect keto uh, with my coffee in the morning. So I get a chocolate keto product. And then I also take their pre-workout product, which I love as well. And I've put it with my coffee before, which you'll hear about in the podcast as well. So you can try that as you would like to. And we even get into like what products you should be starting with depending on your goals. If you're a crossfitter like myself, or you can reach out to me and ask those questions if you would like to. So without further ado, let's jump right into this podcast with Alex Cunningham of Perfect Keto. Enjoy. Alex, welcome to the show. How are you doing today, man? Hey, I'm damn good. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to have you. I'm excited to get into a little bit of a keto talk here. Um, but before we do that, I want to know more about you, man. Like, where did you grow up? How did you get to where you are today? How did you get to working with uh, Perfect Keto? Yeah, absolutely. So I was born and raised in San Francisco and grew up being super active, played football and golf in high school. Uh, went to college at Villanova out by Philadelphia. and. Uh, uh, I majored in chemical engineering and at the time I was just kind of trying to do what <laughs> I thought would be like the hardest thing possible because <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea what I wanted to do and um, that's uh, that's kind of how I started my professional career was getting into chemical engineering and I realized that man like I was just doing what I thought everyone else expected me and wanted me to do with life you know what I mean and in my early 20s I was extremely unhealthy like I was eating terribly wasn't exercising I had tons of substance abuse issues and it kind of like came to a bottom around 23 and uh, then I kind of like was able to flip the switch and started seeing that like be being healthier like eating healthy can actually like change the way I feel and like just be the foundation of feeling good and, and living healthy. And so I got connected with uh, CrossFit pretty soon after and found some like great mentors who just taught me like how to eat real food and you know how to actually exercise and, and things like that. And they were really inspirations for me to see that like, oh, you know, if someone puts pasta on your plate, like you don't have to eat it. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can choose healthier options, like basic stuff like that um, kind of got me fired up about health. Um, and then from there, I met Dr. Anthony Gustin through CrossFit, and he had a blog called thepaleofix.com, and he was one of my influencers about like literally just how to cook uh, great food in a skillet, you know, and, and just, <laughs> you know, eat to support your goals. And so um, we got to be good friends, and then both of us kind of started getting into uh, the ketogenic diet. We went from doing like the... the the low carb, the slow carb, and then just going for it with damn near zero carbs and found out that like we felt outstanding. Um, and that's kind of where our, our interests spawned from. And we started using exogenous ketones and what was available on the market was awful at the time. You know, it was, there wasn't really anything and what was out there was wildly expensive or had garbage ingredients in there. And that's kind of the birthplace of, of Perfect Keto. Very interesting. I love this because you started off with the CrossFit in mind um, and then went down the road of getting rid of the carbohydrates and then the exogenous ketones. So I'd love to dig in a little bit further here into your story. And at, 
what were your effects um, or what did you notice when you first actually started taking the carbohydrates out with your workouts? Like what were the first things that you started feeling? And then like, you know, how long did it take your body to get into ketosis? What happened if you were in ketosis? Were you testing ketosis? I love all this stuff. So get as deep as you would like to. For sure. I'd, I'd say it was rocky uh, to start. Even, even with like having a really good resources and, and knowing things intellectually, like, oh, I need to completely cut out carbohydrates. You know, I need to test using the P6. And then I bought the, bought the blood meter and stuff like that. And I really did a whole lot of research on, on ketosis and, and stuff like that. Even knowing all those things, it was still very rocky. You know, it's a, it's a very simple uh, way to eat. You just cut out carbohydrates and you eat really great, um, you know, fat and protein. Mm -hmm. But it's still very difficult. So um, I feel like I've made every single mistake in, in the keto book along the way. But that first time I ever did it, that first month, it, it was rocky. Like um, my workouts felt fine for the first couple of days. And I was like, Oh, this is great. And then all of a sudden day three through 10, I just felt like just absolute trash. You know what I mean? Just absolute trash. And, but was able to just keep like trusting that I was going to feel good on the other side. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, you know, around day 14 started feeling better and, but still not a hundred percent. And then it just kept getting better and better up past to like week four, week six, uh, week eight. And that was, that was pretty much my experience. Okay. And do you know at what point your body actually started producing ketones on like a, a you know, a, a scale that you could maintain? Yeah. So it was day three for me. Uh, I started getting to uh, like 0.5 millimolar, which they say is the uh, lower level of being in nutritional ketosis. But then at the same time, I was dosing with exogenous ketones. It's one of the most popular use cases is to um, use it to bridge the gap to yeah. until you get into nutritional ketosis. Uh, so that was, yeah, that was how it happened. Okay. And then what have you noticed with your particular CrossFit experience? Are you still doing CrossFit today? I'm not, but it's, it's not because of uh, uh, keto. It's just because I'm, I actually had a, a coming back from an injury and okay. so just taking it slow, but I'm anxious to get back to it. Okay. So but you have experience with being in ketosis and actually throwing down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So like, what was that like as far as, so you said that the first few days were tough and then they started getting better. Did you notice that like certain Metcons or uh, durations of Metcons or strength um, felt differently or, you know, had more energy for some and not for others? What was the experience like? Yeah, I'd say uh, without a doubt, my maximal strength uh, decreased. Okay. Uh, when I was in ketosis and uh, that was a little bit like frustrating or humbling, but then I had to like kind of come to terms with like what my goals were. And my goals were that, A, I really wanted to experiment with this whole ketosis thing. You know, keto feels great mentally. And, and you know, when you're working a lot, like it feels, it feels nice to be on point all the time, even if, you know, your max back squat, you know, suffers by 10% or whatever. Um, and uh, so then the, uh, what is it, the, the wads, just more of like the longer Metcons actually felt very solid, uh, especially like things that were just a sub maximal um, output, uh, I guess you'd say, I felt outstanding. And actually when you're in ketosis, you're using less oxygen uh, per unit of ATP production. So you're I, I, like when I would do like a 10 minute row or something like that, I would feel my muscles getting tired, but I wouldn't get winded. It was remarkable. I was still breathing very slowly. Uh, so there was, there was some, um, some pros and cons to everything. And I think like if the goal is to lose weight, then certainly being in ketosis is a, is a good way to go about it. Even though if you might not feel like peak performance during your workouts, uh, I'd say you just have to prioritize your goals and, and it, unfortunately, I can't have it all. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. And, uh, you know, I want to dig more and more into this and, and your story, but we should probably step back for a quick second, and explain to people through your eyes, uh, what is ketosis exactly? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when you starve your body of carbohydrates, it's going to run through uh, all of your stored glycogen in your muscles, in your liver. And then after that, it's going to start searching out a uh, alternative fuel source. And so what it does is uh, start uh, breaking down your dietary or sorry, your body fat um, through beta oxidation. 
And that uh, ketones are just a metabolite of fat. So I think of it as like, there's pretty much two energy highways. And if you're eating starches and breaking down into glucose, that's one way you can go about it. Or you can be uh, fat adapted and be breaking down fat into ketones. And when you are you know, predominantly relying on glucose, you see kind of like a blood sugar roller coaster. And um, I'm all too familiar with, you know, those feelings of like feeling extremely hangry <laughs> at certain times. And then it's remarkable when you get uh, into a groove with keto, you just feel this laser beam type of uh, energy throughout the day. And it's because your body can seamlessly move from, you know, operating on dietary fats to working off your own body fat. And so it's, it's remarkable just the amount of satiety and you just don't feel hungry at all. You got to remind yourself to eat actually. Cool. And do you happen to know or have a, a recommendation for macros on an ideal keto diet? This is something I, I love chatting about because, you know, in the keto world, everyone seems to be afraid of eating too much protein. There's this very common, you know, saying that like, if you eat too much protein, it'll kick you out of ketosis. And that's incorrect. Uh, you know, there's this thing called gluconeogenesis where your body is capable of making pro, uh, um, glucose within the body from protein. Um, and that's absolutely true, but it happens on a demand basis rather than a supply basis. So it's not like if you have, if my macros call for like 125 grams of protein, it's not like if I eat 130, then those extra five grams get converted to glucose. It's more on a demand base, like whether I'm demanding it from, um, you know, a certain amount of exercise or stress in my body. And it's like, uh, it's absolutely necessary to have gluconeogenesis you know what i mean like it, it like when we when we go into ketosis like our um our blood sugar doesn't drop to zero we still need blood sugar and there's other substrates that you know we we create glucose in the body from we we do it from lactate we use the glycerol backbone of a triglyceride and so it's it's something that i think as a in the, in the keto space we need to be less afraid of eating too much protein i recently just did a carnivore diet where I was eating a high amount of protein, um, zero carbohydrates, and I was still in ketosis the whole time. So uh, I would encourage folks to start with, start with the recommended ratios, which is typically 75% fat, 20% uh, protein, 5% carbohydrates. That will definitely put you in a state of ketosis. Um, and then I'd encourage you to kind of test what your uh, upper limits of, of protein will be because um, certainly my experience and people I've uh, worked with is that feel, feel stronger, feel a little better body composition wise with, uh, you know, sufficient protein. Okay. And then how do you figure out the calorie number based off of that? For sure. So it's, it's just a, a, a rough approximation. You know, you go based on your gender, your uh, body fat percentage, your estimated output. There's a lot of different macro and keto calculators out there okay. on the internet. And then you want to dial up like, you know, say if you want to lose weight, you dial up a caloric deficit. Um, and typically I advise go, go for a small caloric deficit. You know, the body is a survival machine and it doesn't want to give up its, its emergency energy very quickly. So, you know, a 5% deficit can be very sufficient and just, Sometimes I wish people a, a slow weight loss journey, you know, because that seems to be the more like lasting effective approach. Okay, cool. And man, I, I'm just excited to have, be able to talk with a, a keto expert like yourself. And um, these questions are just coming to my head. So forgive me for jumping around here a little bit. Um, but I've heard or read that you can actually have a higher number of carbohydrates if you're training really hard and stay in ketosis. Do you know much about that? And like, have you, what do you think about it? Absolutely true. So um, you see a lot of the 30 grams of carbohydrates being the uh, guideline. And that's because it's been used prevalently in clinical trials. And that's especially for people that are extremely obese or dealing with diabetes or epilepsy and stuff like that. Um, so that seems to have gotten, gotten out there as, as the number. Um, and in a lot of ways, when you're first going keto, I would highly suggest going extremely low carb for as long as you can, because that's going to really maximize your amount of fat adaptation on a cellular level. You're going to upregulate mitochondrial uh, density and efficiency. You're going to upregulate these things called monocarboxylic acid transporters. They're going to uh, give your cells the ability to uptake ketones. So 
go hard for as long as you can uh, at, in your first soiree with keto. But then um, carbs are a cool thing to play with. Um, I, I've, I've tried targeting them before a workout and it's a much success. Uh, and I, I've done things like eat, eating up to like, you know, 75, 80 grams of carbohydrates in a day that I'm training and I've not left ketosis the whole day. But that's after having been, you know, pretty strict keto for uh, months and months and months. So I would definitely encourage going that at first, but then tinkering with, you know, what's going to make you feel best. Super cool. I love this. This is good stuff, man. This is really good. Um, let's jump into what are exogenous ketones, or I tend to tell people just, I say supplemental ketones because they're like, what's exogenous mean? But um, so what is an exogenous ketone? Sure thing. So it's a, yeah, I struggled with the word exogenous too. I remember mispronouncing it and Dr. Anthony <laughs> Gustin was like, dude, we need to get this straight. You need to be able to pronounce this. <laughs> so, um, uh, exogenous ketones are um, biochemically identical to the ones that you would produce within your body when you're in a state of ketosis. So um, I like to think about it as a synthetic form of ketosis or a no carb Gatorade because it is actual real usable energy. It's a metabolite. It's a, a, a substrate, um, but it's not glucose. It's not a carbohydrate. Um, and so what it is is it's, it's something that you can use as a tool for a couple hours to raise your ketone levels. It's not going to be like a magic eraser to erase bad decisions or, uh, you know, magically snap you into ketosis. But if you think about it, like if, if it's going to take you a couple days to get into ketosis, you can keep using this Band-Aid to get there. Or if you're in ketosis and you want a little energy boost um, before, you know, maybe doing a two-hour work session or maybe before exercise, that's exactly what exogenous ketones are for. Very interesting. And then let's dive deeper into perfect keto. And you mentioned how it kind of got, went to that stage, but like, what is perfect keto? What kind of products does perfect keto has? What kind of space does it fill in? Let's say someone's keto journey or life. Great question. I love talking about this because um, it's, it's really been a selfish endeavor. You know, when you go low carb or just try to eat healthy in general, like there's not that many options, especially if you're on the go, if you're traveling, if you're eating out and stuff like that, like if you want to have a successful low carb um, or, or any amount of carb diet, like you pretty much feel like you need to be eating at home and like sourcing all these like great foods all the time. Um, so that's, that's the purpose is we wanted to like make this diet way more accessible. And it started with exogenous ketones, um, moved into MCT oil powder, um, and then collagen. It's, uh, we, we do it in kind of a low dose, like 10, 10 grams of collagen protein uh, for recovery of soft tissue. And we pair it with MCT fats to kind of uh, blunt the insulin response. Um, and then now we're moving into food products. Like we have a nut butter. Uh, we're working on a couple other really cool things, uh, electrolytes. And just basically like the tools to help you feel great on a ketogenic diet. Like I've, I've done keto without supplements before and I miss them big time. You know what I mean? Like I use these as like my little, my little friends, you know, for an energy boost here or a snack there, that type of thing. Okay. Very interesting. And so how would somebody use them if they wanted to lose weight and why would that help them to lose weight if it would at all? For sure. This is a great, great point because uh, I think it's really important to understand that exogenous ketones do not cause weight loss. They're not like a weight loss supplement. And I think just the idea of a weight loss supplement is ridiculous. Like consuming something to lose weight is, is paradoxical. I think. <laughs> yes. so, <laughs> but the way you can use it is as a tool to um, have an effective weight loss diet. Um, and so the way I think about it is, um, People come to ketosis because it's a very comfortable way to lose weight because you feel full all the time and you get to eat these extremely um, flavorful foods. You know what I mean? You're, you're leaving in all the fat and you're feeling full the whole time. So it's a much more comfortable way to eat at a caloric deficit and lose weight. Um, and then the, so exogenous ketones might be the way to, you know, boost yourself uh, into that lifestyle or, or to um, feel full during that. So Instead of, you know, eating a snack, sometimes I'll just have like a half scoop of ketones and I feel insanely full. 
So it's a tool to maybe, you know, make it through your day with uh, uh, at a caloric deficit or just feel great during your day. Um, yeah. Okay. And would the exogenous ketones be just useful for someone who's trying to lose, <clears throat> excuse me, lose weight that was on a ketosis diet? This, this is a great point because it's certainly applicable to someone who is not doing keto at all and has never done it and has no plans to. Like when I just eat a regular paleo style diet, I'm still using ketones. And I think it's great, especially like before a workout, when say instead of eating carbs sometimes before a workout, I'll still just have ketones and it's literally just energy without the carbohydrates. Um, and I, in Ketones are still used by some uh, organs in your body, uh, even in the presence of eating carbohydrates. Uh, so it's used preferentially by, by the brain and heart especially. So I can totally notice a, a sense of well-being and a little boost of mental acuity when I take exogenous ketones, even if I'm crushing sweet potatoes all day. Cool. Do you happen to know what happens in the brain that makes you feel this change? Like what the, what's going on? I don't. I don't. I just know that um, they are a preferred like, source of fuel for the brain. And for that reason, I think it's really uh, intriguing for things like concussion protocol. Mm -hmm. I expect to see them being used in concussion protocol within a year to two years because what happens is your neurons just get completely rocked. And so they're trying to regain balance and they're trying to uptake more glucose, but they have this diminished ability to use glucose. So it's like, a double whammy they're trying to use more and they have less of ability to get it and so you know it would make complete sense that we flood the flood the brain with ketones especially like right after acute brain trauma yeah i think that that's something that i don't really understand fully either um as far as like what happens in the brain but i could tell people that it definitely makes you feel better for some reason so um yeah, it's super interesting stuff. And I know that there's also been some research, right, on like uh, uh, he brain healing, like you were mentioned with not only with concussions, but some other uh, mental diseases and things like that I've, I've heard. Absolutely. Like the, it, the research is just keeps popping up, keeps popping up, and it just feels super promising. Yeah, yeah. What, what exactly happens when you take in the exogenous ketones? Like what's going on in the body? My experience has been, I take them, I'll take a scoop, and at about 30 minutes, my blood ketone levels will start to go up, and they'll raise to about 0.5 millimolar higher than they were. So say if I was never in ketosis, then it would raise to 0.5. If I was in nutritional ketosis, I usually hover around 1.0, so it would go up to 1.5, and then it would just come back down at about the two hour mark um, to whatever baseline I was at. And so, Pretty much, it's, it's almost like, you know, you're, it's almost like the question, what, what's happening in my body when I eat a piece of hard candy? You know, your body is going to digest it, it's going to absorb into the bloodstream, and, you know, it's going to either get used or stored as fat, and it's going to be excreted, uh, you know, through, through urine, and that's, that's pretty much the same process for ketones. Yeah, yeah. So, did, does somebody who has carbohydrates in their diet have a similar effect as far as blood ketones level, or do you know what the difference is? That's a great question. I've only uh, been able to like rigorously experiment on myself yeah. and it seems like it, it seems like the one scoop correlates to 0.5 uh, okay. uh, of a raise for me and I, I don't have information on that. Okay. Know. Okay. Um, and who is there a sport that you think would best be suited for either let's say ketosis with exogenous ketones or even just carbohydrates with exogenous ketones like do you have an ideal as far as sport goes 100 percent would be endurance type okay. sports um if you're trying to be explosive in football for seven seconds at a time i don't think being in ketosis is going to uh, serve you very well and i don't think you know dosing with exogenous ketones is going to like uh, significantly improve your performance but um, if you are doing long distance endurance or you're doing, you know, a 40 minute Metcon at, you know, 60 to 70% the whole time, certainly having more ketones is going to be awesome for you. And I just like to think about it is that, um, you know, for an average person, there's about 600 grams of carbohydrates in stored glycogen 
And for, if you compare that to fat, there's like 40,000 calories of, of body fat on our body. That's like always accessible. So it makes sense for someone who's probably running 25 miles or they're 26 miles to maybe be using that energy uh, pathway rather than having to just keep eating, eating goo, eating goo. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and actually I have an experience where, you know, I went out and did a half marathon uh, a few months back out in actually San Francisco, um, did the North Face Endurance Challenge out in San Francisco. And I was taking the, the ketones as I was going and hadn't eaten anything, but just popping the ketones throughout that race and felt like I was just jamming with energy. So I've definitely experienced that, that, that same feeling for sure. Oh, that's outstanding to hear. Yeah, it's cool. And leads me into this next question though, that I get, and I don't know necessarily the answer to, um, but is our ketones, whether again, with carbohydrates or without carbohydrates, good for a competitive CrossFitter? It's, it's a tough question to answer. Like, would I say, Hey, you should take these ketones before doing 18.1. I, I would tend to say, yes, I, I like to have, I like my body to have like all available substrates ready to rock when I'm trying to be at peak performance. But if I'm trying to like have the best possible score at 18.1, I'm definitely taking carbohydrates. I'm, I'm definitely not trying to be in strict ketosis at, at that time. Mm -hmm. What but about, I think, I think taking some ketones beforehand would be beneficial. And just to extrapolate a little bit more, I, I, I think going keto is worthwhile for anyone and everyone at least for one month at least at some point in their life because i'm not i don't think it's like for everyone all the time but it's certainly a tool in your toolkit and to basically like stress your cells to make them capable of using ketones um i think that's a a positive adaptation to, to tell your body to do yeah, absolutely. And do you know anything about something called like dual energy or dual? Is that? I think oh yeah, dual, probably... dual fuel. Dual fuel. Is that a real thing? It is. It is. Especially after you become fat adapted, it's you really experience this uh, sensation of metabolic flexibility where um, it, the the crude analogy I would do say is like say if I go to do like twelve. Um, back squats or something like that, my body is only going to start using ketones. Like when it, 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 it could, it could switch back and forth between using glycogen and using ketones. And so it's actually going to be a, more effective with the glycogen that it does have um, because it's going to be a little bit smarter with, with, with how it uh, disperses its, its resources. And like, um, I, I, I've just felt it myself and I, I've noticed it like even after going back to eating a high carbohydrate diet, um, if I stop eating carbs for like 16 hours, just do a quick intermittent fast, all of a sudden I'm back producing ketones again. Whereas the first time it was just like a brutal couple weeks and now it's, now it's a couple days. Interesting. So that's basically what you said to, to, in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, that would be perfect for like, a a CrossFit competition where I've got to go and do, like you said, back squats, but then I've got to go and run a 400 or an 800 meter. And then I've got to come in and do handstand pushups. If my body has ketones and muscle glycogen rocking at the same time, doesn't that seem like that would be the best of both worlds? Yeah, absolutely. makes sense to me. I, I feel like, like, like we were saying that I wouldn't go in there in, in strict ketosis, you know, trying to only operate on ketones. But if you, you know, do those, those couple months of, of keto and then start introducing carbs again and dual fuel up before your, um, you know, workouts that you really want to be peak performance, sounds like a recipe for success. Yeah. Sue, so, that really interesting. It makes me want to uh, test it out. I've, I, I personally have not done strict ketosis, but I've got myself into, uh, basically a, into ketosis by doing some more like carb backloading type stuff, but with strategic carbohydrates just post-workout. Um, so I think this is very interesting as far as like, could somebody really take it down the, the path of going into ketosis hardcore? And then like you said, introducing the, the carbohydrates back in 
and seeing what it does for performance. I might have to give that a shot. I would love to hear your experience. Yeah. Uh, what, what, if any, are there side effects of ketones? Um, your stomach, your stomach can hurt. I remember my first couple scoops, I was like, my stomach hurt. My face was getting flush and I was like, oh man, Dr. Gustin, what is this stuff? This is, this is awful. So I'd encourage going with uh, the minimum effective dose. And even if it doesn't feel great uh, the first couple of times, uh, keep trying it. And um, you can't overdose though. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not dangerous. It's, if, if your ketones, first of all, it's self-limiting because of the stomach, but even if you were able to just eat scoop after scoop after scoop, you're going to produce an insulin response to sequester the ketones. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Uh, so the, is, what is that minimum dose? I'd say different for everyone. I always recommend going with a half scoop to start. And okay. that's, been, that's been pretty good for me. I'm, I'm like a half scooper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like, and when you say half scoop, you're just like a half scoop of any of the Perfect Keto products that, have the scooper in them essentially is that what you're saying yep and that's yeah. a that's a good thing to look for is you want to look for the um the amount of bhb in exogenous ketones it varies from product to product ours has 11 point um 11.4 milligrams of bhb and so that's if, you, if you're um, shopping around supplements like it can be pretty daunting like the supplement industry is really slimy and and if you're in the keto space that's that's what to look for Okay. Yeah. And it's funny that you mentioned that because I, my keto or exogenous ketone um, supplementation is a half scoop as well. So half scoop in my coffee to get me going. That's, I've never really had to go higher. It's like, Hey, throw in that half scoop and I'm good to go. <laughs> exactly. Half scoop crew. Yeah. So how long does it take to start seeing benefits of ketones and what happens over time? Is there any benefit to continuing use or is it just like, you're going to get it right away. Benefits of ketones. Um, I feel benefits within 10 minutes, maybe even like five minutes. You know, I had a, uh, had the half scoop before this podcast and you feel, feel good. You feel on point mentally, no doubt about it. Same way with a workout. Um, and then as far as like longer term benefits, if, if you're talking about weight loss, boy, people, have really extremely quick weight loss at the beginning. And I think that's mostly because of water weight because it, it, our body uses carbohydrates to store water or sorry, uses water to store carbohydrates. And so when we're, you know, uh, you know, releasing all those carbohydrates, then all of a sudden we don't have a need for a whole bunch of water. And so people get super excited about that first five pounds, that type of thing, and then get discouraged about, Oh, it's only a pound a week after that. I love to, I, I mean, a pound a week is, is really fast weight loss. You know what I mean? I, I encourage people to just, you know, take it easy and, and be very happy with, you know, half pound here, half pound there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm with you. It's like, I even tell people when I'm trying, when I'm coaching them is like, I'm shooting for a pound a week. That's it. You know, it's like these TV shows that show people losing 20, 30 pounds a week. It's like, that's not realistic or good for you. So we're not going to go for that. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. It's like the saying, like one, one, one pizza doesn't make you fat. Just like one salad doesn't make you skinny. Totally. <laughs> and how many of those pizzas did you have over time to get into the place where you're at right now? You know? So anyway, um, should ketones be cycled at all, like on and off, or is it something that you can take as long as you want? I've, I've seen zero downside to, to taking it regularly for the past two years, personally. And I, I, I haven't felt, there's no like, it's not like you build up a tolerance and have to keep, it, go from a half scoop to a day, a scoop a day, and then two scoops a day or anything like that. Like, um, I, I've seen no change or no need to cycle. Okay. And as far as like race or competitions go, uh, number one, I guess, is there a half-life of, let's say, half scoop of ketones? Like if I'm going to have, you know, a half scoop in my coffee and then I'm going to work out in the afternoon, do you know how long that effective ketone dose will last for just like a regular day? And then, like I said, if I'm doing a race, does that 
shorten and do I need to, you know, be thinking about, all right, I'm, I'm burning through ketones at a faster rate. I need to be supplementing sooner. Super unique by person. For me, it's been two hours. Um, there's uh, literature out there that shows, you know, people having elevated ketone levels after supplementing with ketones from, uh, for even up to six to eight hours. I think that's very much on the longer side. And then great question about, you know, do, would you be using ketones faster, uh, you know, in a high, high intensity situation? I don't know the answer to that. That makes total sense to me, like logically. Um, yeah. I, I don't know the answer. Okay. Interesting. I'd love to, if you come across that, let me know because I, the way that I've done it is, you know, I'll have my ketones before I do like the half marathon, for example. And then once I start feeling a low in energy, I'll have more, but it'd be ideal if I was able to put together a schedule or something, you know, so mm. I didn't have to feel the low energy at all. I just kept on crushing through that, you know, that race, but Let's see, what, what's unique about perfect ketones versus other ketone products? I know you mentioned a little bit how the supplement industry can get a little bit hairy at, the, at times, and I know I've seen that as well. Um, kind of like, what do you guys stand for? Thank you so much for asking this, because um, the, the whole deal with, with Perfect Keto is we, we're a supplement company, but we love to just remind everyone that supplements uh, should be kept supplementary. Like, they're a very, very tiny piece of the puzzle. Um, they're just a very, you know, nice to have type of thing. And so we like to think of it as like if someone picks up a, a can of Perfect Keto, it's almost like a vote for, for their health. You know what I mean? It's like a vote for, um, you know, that they're going to like commit to whatever health goals they have over the next, um, you know, 15, 30 days. And so we like to just use it as like a little platform to um, start communicating about broader health goals, like eating quality, quality foods, like that should be the, the staple of everything is just eating extremely high quality foods. Um, also having like a strong relationship with food rather than, you know, it, I, I've been in the place where I just, you know, feel very, like use it as a, something to make me feel better or, or um, you know, being out socially and just not feeling comfortable ordering a healthy, you know, a healthy entree when everyone else is eating garbage. Um, and we use it as like a way to, to get people to, to watch our podcast where we're talking about things like the importance of sleep and stuff like that, like basic things and stress relief and, and, and movement. Um, and just talk about like, talk about health, like get the health conversation started. That's, that's, that's what really we care about and, and gets us going. So, um, that's, that's the, that's the mission. I love it, man. And I've really enjoyed how you guys send out like nutritional advice and recipes that really helps me get behind you guys as a company. And I, I love that. I think it's super cool and I can feel the mission coming out in the, the stuff that you guys are doing. So love it. Thank you for that. Awesome stuff. Um, if somebody is, they come to your site and they're like, man, I don't know even where to start because there's a lot of products on there, right? Um, and yeah, awesome. all kinds of stuff. Where do you, how do you get people started down the right track? It's really takes a, it, we have something called the keto, keto domination journal. And uh, it's, I can, I can definitely link you to that. And it's just a quick thing where you start out and you just think like, what is really, what really matters to me right now? Like, why am I going keto? Is it because, everyone's just talking about it. Is it because I want to, is it because I'm curious? Is it because I want to lose five pounds? Um, is it because I have um, some acute illness happening? Like, is, am I going for the therapeutic benefits? Um, you know, what's the deal? And then, um, and then extrapolate from there. So say a reason you might come to our greens product is maybe you've been doing keto for a while, um, but you notice that like you're not eating very many fruits and vegetables in order to stay in ketosis. Um, that's the purpose of the micronutrient greens. And so it's a great question. Like, how do you kind of help folks get what they need? And I think it starts with like identifying on a personal level, what is it that I, what is it that I need? You know what I mean? Um, and, and then going from there and it's, it's interesting because like MCTs and ketones, they have very similar benefits. Like I could take either one and I would feel, um, a very similar experience afterwards. So it's hard to direct people like, oh, you should go with ketones or oh, you should go with MCTs. Um, but 
it, it, it's, it, yeah, I think it just starts from, you know, asking yourself what, what you want, like, what, what do you feel deficient at? What are you looking for a boost for? And, and then, you know, doing some reading, doing some research on your own and, and uh, going for it. Okay. We, can we go down that path right now for me right now and see like, so someone could see, all right, how's the, how would a CrossFitter that's trying to perform better um, and have more energy? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So my goals right now are to essentially increase energy. So for like getting jazz for podcasts like this and getting work done, and then also to improve my performance as a CrossFitter. Boom. So one is uh, work performance, mental output. For those, you know, I'm thinking, okay, exogenous ketones or MCT oil. And since you said you're not doing strict ketosis, probably your goal is not to, um, you know, get into ketosis right now. So the main differentiator between ketones and MCTs is ketones will actually raise your blood ketone levels. MCTs will not, at least in my experience, they're just a very quick acting fat and they do the same thing. They, uh, you know, produce a lot of like very easily, easily used brain energy. So I would say roll with, roll with MCTs. Like those, that's going to be extremely sati extremely satiating. Um, and it's going to make you feel on point for, for working. And then can you say again, the second goal in CrossFit? Yeah, just to increase energy in CrossFit, not necessarily for maximal lifts, just for energy production during, let's say, wads. So feeling like I can push harder, longer. I love it. I think, I think in that case, I would go with the exogenous ketones, actually. I, th I think pre-workout, it's important to, if you're going for max performance, give yourself every single thing you need. You know, people talk about doing fasted workouts and stuff like that because it is better for fat burning. And I think, yes, it might increase like the rate of fat burn a little bit better, but you're also going to feel probably pretty depleted. Like working out fasted is a very catabolic uh, scenario. So if you're trying to feel freaking awesome, then give yourself everything you need, you know, 15, 20 grams of carbs, um, some ketones, some creatine, uh, a little bit of MCTs, you know, just, just throw the kitchen sink at it. Yeah. And what, what's that product called that you have the pre-workout? Oh, it's called keto perform. Yeah. And I've actually tried that guys and it's, uh, it's great stuff. And then actually I've had the best experience on it. If you know, I'll, I'll <laughs> this is going to taste sound terrible to people. I'll put it in my coffee sometimes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah i throw i'll throw a scoop of that in my coffee and it's like is it it's like lemon lime flavored right something like that yep. lemon flavored i'm gonna um, try that right after this because i'm <laughs> a little lemon coffee actually yeah so I, ha I have a friend that that told me to try that like uh i forget what it's his concoction was but i'm like i'm gonna try ketones that already has it and, and that has ketones it has creatine it has mcts does it have some caffeine in it too already Super low dose is 50 milligrams from green tea. Okay. So yep. we've heard some response like, oh, I want more caffeine. Um, we've heard some people say, you know, they love the fact that it's a low dose because they still feel really energized with real non-stimulant energy. And they're able to take it at 5, 5.30 for their evening wads and still, you know, be able to sleep at night. Yeah. And I, I've done it both ways. So like if I take it in the morning, I'll throw it in my coffee and then I get that extra caffeine boost in there with it. And I've had some of my best workouts actually doing that scenario where i feel like the energy is just totally blasting out of me on a saturday where we'll do you know a freaking hour long workout that'll be like three different wads with five minute rest in between like totally crushing it so i think it's really interesting um that, that came up and if anybody's looking to get started in their crossfitter that's listening to this definitely give that a shot and if you're an endurance athlete i think it's just even a no-brainer because that it just makes you feel great when you're doing endurance or dur endurance sports. So, um, Alex, how can people find out more about perfect keto? How can they get their hands on some of this stuff? Uh, let's go ahead and give us the sales pitch. <laughs> For sure. So we have a Facebook group. There's a ton of folks who are new to the ketogenic diet and also new to perfect keto supplementation because you know, it is, it's pretty daunting both starting the diet or starting supplementing. So uh, that's perfectketo.com backslash FB as in Facebook. Totally encourage you to, to uh, say hey there. And then podcast, blog, recipes, uh, products, all that stuff is www.perfectketo.com. 
And then I believe, uh, do you have a, a special link set up yet? Yeah, I have a perfectketo.com slash all around Joe. That's, that's uh, active and rocking. So that's another good spot. Yeah. So, and if, if guys have any questions about this, you know, I can try and answer them or, you know, go ahead and post it up on Alex's Facebook group there. Um, I'm sure that they've been so awesome at, like I said, providing information, not only just, not only, you know, providing cool products, but providing information, providing recipes, all that stuff. And I try and share them as often as I possibly can, but I highly recommend that you check out that information that he just listed. So Alex, thanks so much, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the info and letting me uh, geek out a little bit with you here. Um, uh, so 100%. it's an honor. And uh, I know I'm a windbag sometimes. So thanks for, thanks for putting up with me. No, man, I think this is great. And maybe we'll do it again sometime as more and more questions come up. And as we both learn, learn more and want to geek out a little bit more. So thanks Let's again. Uh, yeah, man, have a great day. Hey guys, back here again, all around Joe here. That was my interview with Alex Cunningham of Perfect Keto. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. I love getting to geek out with somebody like Alex and ask questions about performance, mental performance, physical performance, all that stuff. So it's really cool information. The keto industry is just booming right now and the information and the science behind it is also just crushing it along. So I think that we're going to continue to learn more positive things about ketosis and ketones in the future. So if you would like to give them a shot, like I have, go to perfectketo.com slash all around Joe or use the discount code all around Joe when you check out at perfectketo.com. Make sure that you check out their site too. Uh, like I mentioned, there are some really interesting recipes if you want to go down the ketosis route or just for Man, even if you're not in ketosis, the recipes are still going to be great stuff for you. So check out Perfect Keto. Go to perfectketo.com. Use the code all around Joe. Get yourself started. And let me know if you have any questions about how I take them. If I did not cover that in the interview, um, I'm happy to answer, happy to help out as always. So just let me know. The All Around Joe Podcast, where we optimize your human performance from my personal experience as an athlete, coach, and all-around self-improvement junkie. I will see you on the next podcast.